All right, so continue on with part three of how to draw without having to actually draw, which means you can use a mouse. We left off down here where we're adding in this lighting, and so we had this blur, the blur version of it, and we still have the hard version. So I'm going to bring the hard version to the top. And now I'm going to just blur it out a, a bit, go to the blur, Gaussian blur, and you want to kind of have somewhat of a maybe like that and then we'll go to filter blur motion blur to kind of extend it out not quite as long as the other one though like so and the reason why we want this to you know not be hard is because it ha it's on a you know it's kind of curved it's on a it's on an edge where it it's not like a hard edge so it's a curvy edge and we could actually maybe have one solid line somewhere in here but and I, I don't, it's not in the photos so I don't see any reason to do that Right, so um, there are some parts here I want to be a little bit darker perhaps, so let's see. What we're going to do is go to the base, go to the actual base layer. So what I did is hold down the control key, clicked on the base layer to bring up the highlights there, or the marquee, and then clicked on the base layer to make sure I'm on that layer. I'm going to choose the color black, choose a big paintbrush, and I'm just going to sweep across the bottom here just to make sure it's darker. And then I'm going to take uh, this light color here, and we we'll kind of just bring out the edges there so that it you know has more lighting on that particular part. All right, so it's all starting to come together. It's starting to look like it has its 3Dness to it. And now we just need to start adding um, the buttons and stuff and the different details and um, maybe you know add the, you know some highlight to those buttons, for example. And then some edges, like some beveled edges and stuff. But you know what I just did is I just messed up something I didn't mean to do. So I'm going to go back here, and now I need to take the black again, smaller brush, and I need to make sure I just stay within this edge here, because all that's supposed to be black, so like that, and maybe even this bottom part all should be black. Okay. Make sure you save often, because you don't want to like lose a bunch of stuff you did, and be like, oh man, it's been all that time, and now it's all gone. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all the highlight layers, holding down the shift key, click the top one, hold on the shift key, click the bottom one, and then we'll go to merge layers. So now my highlight's all in one. Again, I'm going to color coordinate that so I know those are my highlight. That's my highlight layer, like so. I'm going to um, add one more thing of um, highlight. I think it'll look cool. I'm going to grab the pen tool, make another layer above this, click here with the pen tool, click here click here, um, click here like this. So it's like a, a line sort of going upward. And the convert pen tool, I'm going to grab this anchor point, and I'm thinking it might look better if it's, I'm trying to think what way it might look better curved. Probably this way. And maybe this one could be curved up. I don't know if they both should be curved up or one could be curved down, one up. You can look at it and see which one looks better. And I'm going to go ahead and make this a selection now. Grab the gradient tool, make sure you have white. I'm going to pull up this way at an angle, maybe a little bit more, like so. Then I'm going to go to this base layer. I'm going to hold down the control key, left click on that to bring out the marquee tool, select inverse. Now we'll get rid of everything except for that lighting. I might actually even want that lighting on the screen too. Looks pretty cool. So I'm going to go back and um, hold down the, make sure, nope. So hold down the Alt key to get rid of this. That way it adds to it. And now I'm going to hit the Delete key. So now it gets rid of the um, highlight everywhere else that was outside. And you would you want you can't really see it because it's white, but I'm going to make the background kind of a blue color for now, so you can kind of see that you know that way if you make mistakes you can see them out there. Now I'm going to go to that new highlight layer I just made, highlight layer, and bring it down in opacity until it looks cool something like so. Okay, so now we can start making the buttons on top of all of this. Also, I want to go ahead and get rid of that screen. And I'm going to import, you can you can put anything you want for your screen. For my screen, I'm going to import one of my artworks. Okay, so now to make the artwork look like it's set in there, I need to add some highlight and shadow. This is easy enough. All I got to do is on that same layer that I just, you know, I just, I'm on this um, screen layer that's underneath everything else. Just going to click here with a dark color, black, 
and drag across here with the paintbrush tool, like so. I'm going to grab a highlight color and do the same thing over here. Oops. And here. Make this one a little bit thicker, like that. And I'm going to also drag this across here, like so. And I'm just going to turn the opacity down. Oops, can't turn the opacity down. I should have put. I should have done that on a layer on top of that. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. Make a layer on top here. Or I could have used a lighter color, but whatever. Boom. I might want to make that one like a. You know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um. Size three brush is probably a little too big, so I'm trying to just get it perfectly where it fits like that. I'm going to use a size one brush for this part here. Maybe even size two. No, one will work. And then turn that down like that. Grab black. Make sure I put that black across like that. Okay, so now it looks like it's, you know, fit in there and everything. So it looks good. Now we've got to start adding buttons, but before we add buttons, actually, what I did notice is that these buttons actually come all the way across the top there. And I could um, do that if I wanted to, and you can you know make that light part that'll actually be there. I'm gonna use a size three brush here. I'm gonna come all the way across holding the shift key. Just kind of go back and forth a few times to make sure it's nice and strong. Okay, now to add the highlight to this, um, just gonna use this tool. No, that, that usually doesn't select it right. So I'm going to go ahead and try this. Um, you could try getting rid of everything that has like that kind of color in it, and then go to Select, Color Range. OK, so now that, that should be good. Make sure you're on the button layer. And then let's make, um, let's see how I'm going to do this. Let's make one layer above it. Select, modify, contract by two pixels, like so, and then use the gradient tool. I'm going to set it to white for now, and kind of pull just down like this. Maybe one more, and then let's turn the opacity down that just a bit, like so. And that's really all you need to do for those buttons. You don't really have to do anything more fancy than that. Right, so now we need to add the other button. So the next button we're going to add, I think, will be the D-pad. So the first thing we need to do for the D-pad, then, is to make a circle. It's good if you use the photo as a reference here to make sure you get it perfect. Start from the center, hold down Alt and the Alt key and Shift key simultaneously, and then drag outward. And you should be able to get a perfect circle this way, like so. And I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of these really quick. My guidelines, I don't need them right now. Probably won't need them again. Okay. Right, so we're going to need one dark circle and one light circle. And we're going to have them overlap each other. And we're going to do this above all these layers. And edit stroke we'll start with black first and probably just uh, need one pixel and then we're gonna move this down by hitting the down arrow on your keyboard by one pixel yeah we'll just do one pixel make a new layer just in case we mess this up edit stroke make this white and by two pixels click OK Let's go ahead and bring it down again. Another pixel, another pixel, like so. And um, turn the opacity way down. Like that. And then the triangles will fit on top of that, so it'll look right. One thing we might need to actually is um, start again. Just kind of get it as close as you can and kind of fit it into place. Like make a perfect circle by holding the control and 
and alt key at the same time something about like so and let's see I probably need to make it a little bit smaller actually I'm gonna just pull this down just so you can see that little part right there and pull okay well, let me use the arrow keys like that that should work hopefully that'll work okay now we need to make the lighting look this dips in just a little bit and since the lighting is coming from the top when something dips in a little bit the top becomes dark and the bottom becomes light so you just need to do a reverse gradient on it to get that effect and I'm gonna pick two colors very similar I'm gonna pick this kinda um, lighter gray color over here or so because I don't want that color it's too dark so more light like that maybe a little bit lighter than that about like so and then dark will be black I think we'll try that out make a new layer just in case you mess up pull it in the option oops wrong direction it should be pulled in that direction and that should work right so now it looks like it's kinda dipping in a little bit and then we'll draw our triangle buttons on top of that for the for the d-pad and that should work out look pretty cool all these little techniques I'm showing if you memorize them will help you when you're drawing to put all this stuff in you know, into practice and you know you'll remember that different stuff that you did and like oh yeah that's right and then you can you know use that same technique and to get the same result for different things this could be used for example of doing part of it inside hubcap and then you cut out what you don't need right so we're gonna draw the buttons on top of this so now we need the kind of triangle shape which is this kind of shape here easiest way to get that shape is going to be with the pen tool and just um, I would just use instead of trying to do it from scratch I would actually just cheat that's not really cheating but just use the photo reference why give yourself the headache click on the on the all the five points of the shape like so this is usually the easiest way to get a shape like this and then the convert and just pull the edges and make them round like so I personally think this is the easiest way to get these kinds of shapes I want to pull this one a little bit more like that and then I want to take the um, white arrow tool I need to pull these down a bit because I don't want them to, I want them to kind of be a little on the inside of the black because I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually stroke this shape here after we fill it in so let's go ahead and edit uh, make selection. For now, just fill it in with the base gray color. Let's say something like this. And solid. Make sure you're on a new layer again. And then go to edit and stroke and stroke it with black. Two pixels should work. And maybe even three pixels. Let's go back. Let's see what happens if we do three pixels. That looks a little better. And as you can see, we, we got the, you know, that shape that we kind of need there. Now, one thing that's kind of the same in all of these is the overall shape, but the lighting is a little different. But we'll we'll fix we'll we'll come up with some base thing we can use over and over again, and then just add a little bit of different lighting to each one. So I'm going to go and modify this. I'm going to contract it by two pixels. I'm going to contract again by two pixels. And that should work. Let me see if that's about where it is. Yeah, it's about right. And I'm going to just stroke that again with black, but one pixel. Like that. So that right there will work as our base shape. And then we can work on top of that. And unfortunately, what I, I did something wrong here is I need to go back here I need to fill this in with the overall color it's going to be that I could um, you know fix and everything so notice that the buttons are kind of dark but they have some lighting we'll add lighting to them like I said but um, more I look at it I don't think this is even a photo anyway like some of the lighting looks wrong like these buttons look like they just flip this button and it's wrong because the lighting is not hitting it right we're, we'll make the lighting hit it consistently. Alright, I'm running out of time here.
just thinking how I want to go about this. Um, okay, so we'll make the button kind of darker gray, more like this color here. And then we'll go ahead and modify that, contract it by two again, and then add in that one pixel. Oops. Needs to be black, like so. Right, so now we have the base of our button there, and then we can add the um, lighting to each individual button as we move them around and copy them. But you'll have to come back for the next video for that.